The dragon, hearing his yelp, turned and snorted. But Garm was already far out of range. He ran all the rest of the night and arrived home about breakfast time. Help! 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 He cried outside the back door. Giles heard and did not like the sound of it. It reminded him that unexpected things may happen when all seems to be going well. Wife, let that dratty dog in, said he, and take a stick to him. Garm came bundling into the kitchen, with his eyes starting and his tongue hanging out. Help! he cried. Now what have you been a-doing this time? said Giles, throwing a sausage at him. Nothing! panted Garm, too flustered to give heed to the sausage. Well, stop doing it, or I'll skin you said the farmer. I've done no wrong. I didn't mean no harm, said the dog. But I came on a dragon ac accidental like, and it frightened me. The farmer choked in his beer. Dragon, said he. Drat you for a good-for-nothing nosy parker. What do you want to go and find a dragon for at its time of year? And me with my hands full. Where was it? Oh, north, over the hills and far away, beyond the standing stones and all, said the dog. Go away there, said Giles, mightily relieved. They're queer folk in those parts, I've heard tell, and out might happen in their land. Let them get on with it. Don't come... Weriting me with such tales. Get out! Garm got out and spread the news all over the village. He did not forget to mention that his master was not scared in the least. Quite cool he was and went on with his breakfast. People chatted about it pleasantly at their doors. How like old times, they said. Just as Christmas is coming, too, so seasonable. How pleased the king will be. He will be able to have real tale this Christmas. But more news came in next day. A dragon, it appeared, was exceptionally large and ferocious. He was doing terrible damage. What about the king's knights? People began to say. Others had already asked the same question. Indeed, messengers were now reaching the king from the villages most afflicted by Christophilix, and they said to him as loudly and as often as they dared, Lord, what of your knights? But the knights did nothing. Their knowledge of the dragon was still quite unofficial. So the king brought the matter to their notice, fully and formally asking for necessary action at their early convenience. He was greatly displeased when he found that their convenience would not be early at all, and was indeed daily postponed. Yet the excuses of the knights was undoubtedly sound. First of all, the royal cook had already made the dragon's tail for that Christmas, being a man who believed in getting things done in good time. It would not do at all to offend him by bringing in a real tail at the last minute. He was a very valuable servant. Never mind the tail. Cut his head off and put an end to him, cried the messengers from the villages most nearly affected. But Christmas had arrived, and most unfortunately a grand tournament had been arranged for St. John's Day. Knights of many realms had been invited and were coming to compete for a valuable prize. It was obviously unreasonable to spoil the chances of the Midland Knights by sending their best men off on a dragon hunt before the tournament was over. After that came the New Year holiday. But each night the dragon had moved 
and each move had brought him closer to Ham. On the night of New Year's Day, people could see a blaze in the distance. The dragon had settled in a wood about ten miles away, and it was burning merrily. He was a hot dragon when he felt in the mood. After that, people began to look at Farmer Giles and whisper behind his back. It made him very uncomfortable, but he pretended not to notice it. The next day the dragon came several miles nearer, and Farmer Giles himself began to talk loudly of the scandal of the King's Knights. I should like to know what they do to earn their keep, said he. So should we, said everyone in Ham. But de Miller added, Some men still get knighted by sheer merit, I am told. After all, our good Aedius here has already a knight in a manner of speaking. Did not the king send him a red letter and a sword? There's more to knighthood than a sword, said Giles. There's dubbing and all that, or so I understand. Anyway, I've my own business to attend to. Oh, but the king would do the dubbing. I don't doubt if he were asked, said the miller. Let us ask him before it is too late. Nay, said Giles. Dobbin is not for my sort. I am a farmer and proud of it. A plain, honest man, and honest men fare ill at court, they say. Tis more in your line, Master Miller. The Miller smiled. Not at the farmer's retort, for Giles and the Miller were always giving one another as good as they got, being bosom enemies, as the saying was in Ham. The parson had suddenly been struck with a notion that pleased him, but he said no more at that time. The miller was not so pleased, and he scowled. Plain, certainly, and honest, perhaps, said he. But do you have to go to court and be a knight before you kill a dragon? Courage is all that is needed, as only yesterday... I heard Master Agadeus declare. Surely he has as much courage as any knight. All the folks standing by shouted, Of course not! And, Yes, indeed! Three cheers for the hero of Ham! Then Farmer Giles went home, feeling very uncomfortable. He was finding that a local reputation may require keeping up, and may prove awkward. He kicked the dog, and hid the sword in the cupboard in the kitchen. Up till then, it had hung over the fireplace. The next day the dragon moved to the neighbouring village of Quercetum, Oakley in the Volga Tongue. He ate not only sheep and cows, and one or two persons of tender age, but he ate the parson too, Rather rashly, the parson had sought to dissuade him from his evil ways. Then there was a terrible commotion. All the people of Ham came up the hill, headed by their own parson, and they waited on Farmer Giles. We look to you, they said, and they remained standing round and looking, until the farmer's face was redder than his beard. Well, when are you going to start? they asked. Well, I can't start today, and that's a fact, said he. I have a lot on hand, with my cowman sick and all. I'll see about it. They went away, but in the evening it was rumoured that the dragon had moved even nearer, so they all came back. We look to you, Master Agadeus, said they. Well, said he, it's very awkward for me right now. My mare has gone lame, and a lambing has started. I'll see about it as soon as may be. So they went away once more, not without some grumbling and whispering. The miller 
was sniggering. The parson stayed behind and could not be rid of. He invited himself to supper and made some pointed remarks. He even asked what had become of a sword and insisted on seeing it.